story time, children. The plan is uh, Sherlock Holmes TV on Street Fighter V. It's gonna be live. That's what we're starting out with. I'm calling it a marathon, which might be bad luck to do in advance, and I make no promises I'll not change the game or TV show at any time. Wish us luck. Oh, you're insane. Mm, The city you consider as home is never so attractive as when you return to it after long and difficult times in other parts of the world. My name is Dr. John Watson. I have served and been wounded in the more remote regions of Afghanistan and had been discharged from the army with specific instructions to rest. The sight of London again was already working its soothing tonic. As I rode through the familiar streets, I never suspected that a chance introduction would lead me into the most amazing adventure of my entire life. Watson, old man! <laughs> Hello, how have you been? It's good to see you. Not as well as you, obviously. You look great, old man. <laughs> Here, you were wounded. Well, it could have been much worse. Sit down. <laughs> Care for a drink? Mm, that one. Yes. Well, what are your plans now? You're oh, nothing really at the moment. I'm looking for lodgings. Trying to solve the old problem of comfortable quarters at a reasonable price. That's odd. 
the second man today that's used that expression. Really? Who's the other? Well, you wouldn't know him. He's doing some work in the chemical laboratory at the hospital. Might be interesting. Yes, well, I wouldn't mind sharing a flat with somebody if, uh, if he was all right. Well, I... Anything wrong? Oh, no. He's rather strange. Well, what's wrong with him? Oh, nothing wrong with Holmes. That's his name, Sherlock Holmes. Well, when I saw him this morning, he was doing some research with a corpse. Oh, what was he doing? He was beating it with a stick. I beg your pardon. Did you ring, sir? Two shares, please. Very good, sir. What did you say this Sherlock um, Holmes fellow was doing? He was beating a corpse with a stick. Oh? What in heaven's name do you want to do that for? He wanted to find out if it was possible to inflict a bruise on a body after death. Why? You know? Did you ask him? That's another strange thing about this, Holmes. Somehow, one never thinks to question him. in criminal investigation. Yes, I'm Holmes. How did you know I was Watson? Because you've just come back from Afghanistan. How do you do? How do you do? How did you know I'd just come back from Afghanistan? Well, it's, it's written all over you. The problem has generally been that a man is suspected of a crime months after the crime is committed. Then when they find blood stains on objects of clothing, they can't be sure if it's blood, mud, or rust stains. But this solves the whole thing, of course. Oh, of course. Of course. Stamford told me you're looking for someone to share the flat you'd found. Do you know, if this test had been in existence a year ago, it would have meant that von Bishop of Frankfurt would most certainly have been hung. And that goes for Mason of Bradford, Muller and O'Fay, naturally. Uh, naturally. Who are these people? Did you know I'm delighted to meet you, Watson? I think you'll like the flat. It's in Baker Street, by the way. Oh, we could pop around this afternoon and have a look at it if you care. Yes. Oh, yes, rather, I'd like that. Good. Did you mind if I play the violin? No, go right ahead. No, no, I don't mean now. I mean uh, when we're sharing the flat. Oh, no, no of course not. I, I like a bit of good music. Oh, good. I'm, I'm not very good. Oh. Um, tell me, Holmes. Yes. How did you know I just yeah, got back from Afghanistan? Well, that is obvious. Now, that's what you said before. It's a bit obvious. You're a doctor. That much we know. But with the air of a military man, therefore an army doctor. You've acquired a sunburn. I know it's not your natural color because your wrists are white. Your eyes tell me that you've recently been ill. I'd say some sort of tropical fever. Do you use your left arm stiffly as though you've sustained a wound? Now the problem becomes, where would an army doctor contracted a fever sustain a wound? The answer, my dear Watson, is in the present campaign in Afghanistan. Naturally. Naturally. Of course, it's obvious. Naturally. We examined the rooms at 221B Baker Street that afternoon and promptly moved in on the following day. I had, at this point, known Sherlock Holmes for only 24 hours. But the man's fantastic powers of perception, coupled with the almost unpredictable personality I'd ever encountered, kept me in a state of constant surprise when I was being shot. It was unbelievable the things he knew and the things he didn't know. Oh, really, my dear Holmes, you mean to tell me you didn't know that the Earth moved around the sun? Really? But every school child knows that. Uh, well, now I know it, too. I shall promptly proceed to forget it. But why? Let me hear you sing yeah. Why? Why should I remember it? Well, because it's a natural phenomenon. Well, is it important? Does it affect us? If you told me the Earth went around the moon, would it make any possible difference to our way of life? Well, put it that way, no. Then it's useless information, and I shall do my best to forget it. I advise you to do the same. At times, I thought the man was joking and simply having a bit of fun at my expense. 
when I soon learned that he was in dead earnest. I also, unknown to him, made a brief classification of a man's knowledge. Literature? Nothing. Philosophy? Nothing. Astronomy? Nothing. Politics? Disinterested. Botany? He knew everything there was to know about poisons, and absolutely nothing about practical gardening. Chemistry profound. Sensational literature? Without question, Sherlock Holmes knew the details of every horror perpetrated in the last hundred years. Sherlock Holmes. Excuse me. Sir? Do you mind telling me your occupation? Not at all, sir. I'm a civil servant employed by the police department. Okay. I don't want it. Not at all, sir. How long have you been with the police department? Just a year, sir. Before that, I was a sergeant in the Marines. Good day, gentlemen. How did you know? An interesting letter, Watson. A very interesting letter. Perhaps you'd like to come with me. Where? To catch a murderer, of course. Of course. <laughs> How did you know that that man was an ex-sergeant of Marines? Oh. A messenger from the police. Oh, yes, yes, the retired sergeant of Marines. That's what I said. Well, there's nothing mysterious about such observations, my dear Watson, but unfortunately, when explained, they lose their romantic order of mystery. My decision was based on observation and logical deduction. The man had a large anchor tattooed on the back of his hand. This was visible from our window. I admit I didn't notice it at the time, but since you mention it, I think there was an anchor. Oh, there was indeed. He also wore regulation sideburn and a slight nautical robe. Thus, I judged him a marine. Well, guess, I grant you, but only a refinement of guesses one makes every day. <coughs> Don't be so disgruntled, Watson. Test your own powers of observation. We are entering the perfect situation. So, what are we entering? A house that holds a murdered man. Yes, sir. May I have your name, please? Yes, yeah, Sherlock Holmes. So this is Dr. Watson. Oh, that's quite all right, sir. Inspector Lestrade gave instructions to admit you. Oh, good. Oh, by the way, has the body been removed? No, sir, but the medical examiner's just gone. Oh, thank you. Let's hope they haven't moved things about too much. The police forces of the world seem to have an organized science of messing things about. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Holmes. Hmm. Now then, move along there, everybody. Move along. There's nothing to see today. I don't know. I swear I don't know. I, I tried to help him. Don't you believe me? I had to do what I could. It was instinctive. Instinctive for a woman like you to commit murder. That's not true. You know it's not true. I know you hate me, but you can't believe I'd do a thing like this. Yes, I can, and I do. She's a murderess. You know it as well as I. She murdered your brother. It's a lie. Yes, it's a lie. Frank, our story's a lie. The relationship you had with my son was a lie. <laughs> my son's been murdered. <laughs> this girl's a murderess. 
Why she did it, what her motive was, I, I don't know. They were engaged without my blessing. I can only be grateful that she gains nothing by her crime. Your duty now is to convict her. Difficult to say. Thirty-six. Oh, between the two. I see. And death? Shortly thereafter. Two minutes. Three. Three or four, I'd say. Thank you, Watson. All right, take it, man. Ah, forgive the interruption. I would prefer to have been invited before the party had been moved. I thought you'd be interested, Holmes. Oh, thank you, Mr. Strait. Well, may I introduce my friend, Dr. Watson, Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard? How do you do? Well, how do you do? So you're completely stuck in the street. What do you mean? Well, you thought I'd be interested. Why don't you admit it? You're in a jam. Like this is a cabinet work, don't you think? What you say isn't exactly true, Holmes. I've done you a favor. This is an interesting case. Of course, there are one or two unexplained details, but I don't believe it'll be long before we clear What's your hand? principal problem? There's no motive. I found this girl with a knife in her hand. My brother lying dead on the floor. I found Peter on the floor. I, I tried to help. By stabbing him? By removing the knife. Anybody would have done the same thing. I love him. Oh, my dear young lady, there's no cause for you to alarm yourself. No one's accusing you of, uh, well, of what happened. This would be a clear-cut case if only she had a reason for murdering. There happened to be a policeman outside the house during the murder, and he said that no one came in except her. Well, what about the others? Who benefits by her death? Well, no one. The estate was left in such a way that if he died before he married, everything went to charity. My dear Inspector Lestrade, he didn't die before he married. This young lady and the man whose body was carried out of here had been married for at least a week. In the event of his death, I imagine everything passes to her. Now, we return to the case of the Cunningham heritage. How did you know they were married? Weren't you? Yes, a week ago. Then you do benefit by my brother's death. You're his heir. I don't know if I am or not. I only know I didn't kill him. I swear I didn't. Where were you married? We went down to Brighton last weekend. Well, why didn't Peter say anything about it? I don't know. He asked me not to say anything, so of course I didn't. I'm afraid, young lady, I'll have to ask you to accompany me to headquarters. Excuse me, Inspector, I think I should tell my mother. Oh, yes, of course. Tell me, Holmes, how did you know they were married? Well, the man's hands had the remains of a son. Fading marks of a narrow ring, but not as yet that indentation of the finger a ring generally leaves. A weekend in the sun at Brighton explains the whole thing perfectly. I didn't notice these things. Yes, I know. The young lady's hands were also sunburned to the same degree. Then the case is solved. Yes, it would appear so, wouldn't it? What are you looking for? Did you see that? What? Yeah. Use this. Why that that's only the Cutting the carpet. Yes, but it's a fresh one. Yes, but what does it mean? That's a good question. You'll stop working for Lewis now, Holmes. Ah, you solved the case then. Completely. Oh, splendid. Seems this girl had a record. Nine months in the woman's prison in Holloway, from the 21st of February, 1892, to the 21st of November, 1892. She's employed as a governess and convicted for stealing 300 pounds from an employer. It's quite true. I knew you'd find out sometime. I made a mistake five years ago, but I paid for it. 
But Peter knew all about it before we were married. I never tried to hide it from him. You didn't know what else you had in mind. I had nothing else in mind except that I loved him. I'm afraid I must ask you to go with the officer, miss. Rather, madam. Well, that's how I like my cases. Fast and simple. Oh, easy. You must tell me some more about it. Well, there's nothing to tell, really. The story was that Peter asked her to call here at 10 sharp. She arrived, found the door open for her, came in here and found him rising on the floor with a knife on his chest. She screamed, pulled it out, just then Brother Ralph walked in. Round one. He died without saying another word. So she stabbed him for the inheritance and was caught in the act. Listen, but it was. Uh, I still think it's a tragedy. Yes, but my job, Dr. Watson, we run up against it all the time. Huh? No, thank you. Well, I suppose you've had some amazing adventures. Yes, but one learns to have a real philosophy of life and get a good perspective. Yes, I suppose. I'll just say, I think it's a pity. Just another case of a clever girl being too clever. A clever girl who intended to murder her husband certainly chose the most stupid possible way to commit the crime. Well, what was that? Oh, what's this? Checkbook. Amazing deduction for straight. Round two. Point. So Peter Cunningham drew a check for a thousand pounds. Six weeks ago. And five weeks ago. And four. And three. And two. And that's all. Well? And you want the cash. Well, I don't get your point. He was a very rich man. Well, a great deal of cash. It was his own money. I suppose he could do what he liked with it. May have hit the proverbial name. Now look here, Holmes. You're trying to start something that just doesn't exist. I have a great deal of respect for your opinion, Holmes. But your trouble is that you can't leave things alone. If there isn't a mystery, you have to make one, and you're not happy. You're right, I'm not happy. There are marks on the carpet indicating a struggle. The man whose body was carried out of here was over six feet in height. If he had struggled with a girl who had left here, I don't think he'd have lost. She surprised him. Oh, but he was expecting her. That's her story. I I'd say she sneaked up on him. Stabbed him in the chest. How do you sneak up on someone and stab him in the chest? Look here, Holmes. You're trying to start something, and I just won't stand for it. That girl's a jailbird, and she's guilty, and she's going to hang, and that's the end of the case. I see Inspector Lestrade is up to his usual mental gymnastics, trying to hammer square takes into round her. Well, there, it's been a great pleasure meeting you, Inspector. I warn you to keep away from that man, Holmes, or you'll be insane in less than a week. The great thing about the bottle and the stones, they go hand in hand. The shoes are, you know, you can put rocks, you can do everything with the shoes. We're in different environments every day, whether it's sun or cold, and the shoes, I always know that I can rely on their shoes day in, day out, whether it's mud or we're on a stage or in wet conditions, they're gonna keep my feet comfy and dry. What time is it? Hmm? Half past ten. Perhaps you'd like to take a little stroll with me. Why? I'd like to investigate this afternoon's affair a bit further. Oh, yes. I'd like that. I thought you'd forgotten about it. Not at all. I've been thinking about it all evening. Shall we go? Mm. Then we must exchange our thoughts en route. Where are we going? To the Cunningham House. I didn't know you made an appointment there. Huh. I didn't. Oh, well, who do you expect to see? No one, I hope. I'm terribly sorry, Holmes, but I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean when you say you want to go to the cutting house. You just... You can't do that. What? Well, you can't break into the house. Why not? It's against the law. That's why not. Why is that caught? That is. Well, what do you want it? If we're caught. I better make sure it's safe to listen to the door. Good evening, Sergeant. Everything all right? Yes, sir. 
I just thought Sherlock Holmes might have dropped by. Where'd you get the key? My key is a burglar's too. A burglar's too? Speak here. How do you know he's out? But if I had a spy watching the house, goes with that cabinet. What am I looking for? Well, papers, bank statements, anything to indicate passage of money from Peter Cunningham's account. Go on. It's absolutely ridiculous. Looking for something and you don't know what in order to catch somebody and you don't know who. Quite ridiculous. Peter Cunningham tried to hide the fact of his marriage. A week or a month with the main indifference as far as his mother was concerned. She would never have consented to his new bride anyway. <laughs> one week to clear out of the country before he exposed me. The money he paid you went to buying up your promissory notes. I was being pressed, Mr. Holmes. My brother's engagement to a jailbird gave me a perfect opportunity to extract a little money from him. In fact, if he hadn't been such a bullhead, it would have gone on for quite some time. A jailbird, as you put it, makes a perfect murder suspect. Perfect, Mr. Holmes. And you and Dr. Watson make perfect burglary suspects. When I report your death to the police, they can't possibly blame me for defending the sanctity of my home. Well done, Watson. Oh, I could have done a bit better on you. It was the bad shoulder. <laughs> Quite all right, Watson. Think no more about it. Perhaps I'm a... Yes, the only possible one, of course. Only a man could have struck that blow. Peter died, as you say, within three or four minutes. And there was a bobby outside, the hotel. Yes. Crystal clear. Oh, completely obvious. Well, what do we do now? What's going on here? Who, who fired that shot? With a good inspector. And with the aid of our evidence, a bit of logic, and a few simple diagrams, we will endeavor to convince him that night follows day, that one and one inevitably makes two. How did you two get in here, anyway? I think we have a great deal to talk about. Also present with Inspector Lestrade was Dr. John Watson and a personal friend of the inspectors, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. This is ridiculous. It's fantastic. This isn't the way it happened at all. This Revolutionize investigation, Watson. This whole account is a lie. Fingerprints, Watson. That's the coming thing. Oh, nonsense. What are you going to do about this? A bit more research. Here, give me your fingers on the sheet of paper. Oh, round one. Are you going to sit there with these disgusting little smudges and, uh, and let them get away with this? Thank you, Watson. Well, I won't. They're going to hear from me. Brilliant Inspector Lestrade. Why, it took you three hours to convince that boat. I don't know. Never in my fight by her. I wonder if he got more than a shoulder wound in Afghanistan.
Inspector Lestrade. At once. Your name, sir? Dr. John Watson. Is he expecting you, sir? In a way, I believe he is. Well, I'll tell him you're here, sir. Dr. Watson, I didn't expect to have the pleasure of seeing you again so soon. Will you kindly read that? Uh, what is it? Read it. Oh. Yes, sir. Oh. I think it's disgraceful, sir. Absolutely disgraceful. What? Yes, and I'm glad you are here so that I can tell it to you personally. Why, you and I both know that it was Sherlock Holmes who solved the Cunningham case. If it wasn't for his brilliance and his persistency, the facts would never have been brought to light. And I think it's scandalous, sir, that the newspapers should have given me all the credit and said so very little about his magnificent achievement. What do you think, Doctor? Hmm? Uh, I, I, well, I actually agree with you. Eh? I'm glad you're on my side, Doctor. Why, of course, I'm so glad you take it that way. Well, what does Holmes think? Oh, he doesn't mind, you know, he doesn't care who gets the credit. No, oh, dear old Elm, such a modest fellow. Yes, well, look, you must give him my kind regards. Yes. And tell him that, although I know he doesn't think anything about it, I intend to get the newspapers to get the facts straight. Well, that's very good of you, Inspector. Oh, what's Holmes doing these days? Well, the last time I saw him, he was playing about with a lot of ink smudges and talking about um, the prints that fingers make. No. <laughs> <laughs> good old Holmes, always experimenting. <laughs> Lestrade, sir. Yes, what is it? There's been a murder reported at the home of Lord Beryl. What? Lord Beryl of the Foreign Office? That's him, sir. Uh, I'll be right with you. Excuse me, Doctor. Yes, of course. Lord Beryl. It's going to be a tricky situation to handle. What with the Foreign Office and who knows what else? Yes. Can I be of any assistance? No, I don't think so, Doctor. Oh, perhaps as a medical man, mind you, I don't know what to expect, but I think you would be of invaluable assistance. Say no more. Here's the address, sir. Your carriage is waiting outside. Oh, thank you very much. Perhaps you'd care to acquaint Sherlock Holmes and what has happened. Well, uh, I don't know. I don't know myself what's happened. As you said, the people involved make this case rather delicate. Perhaps a little suggestion now and then might help facilitate matters. One never knows. Yes, you're so right. Take a message to Mr. Sherlock Holmes of 221 Baker Street. 221B. Yes, of course, 221B Baker Street. Tell him what has happened and drive him to Lord Bill's letter. Yes, sir. And tell him Dr. John Watson is already there. That's the first floor. Yes, sir. Very good, sir. Good morning, sir. of Lord Beryl. Inspector Lestrade and Dr. Watson have already gone there. Thank you. Would you uh, care to have some tea? Some tea, sir? Yeah. Is that what you're making? Oh, come along. Come and have a look at this. I'm working on an extract from a special series of, of pygmy poisons. Oh, very interesting. Uh, tea? Well, yes, I don't mind if I do. Pig milk? Yes, sir. Please, sir, if I may. Send it. Sugar? Thank you, sir. Uh, where did I put that? Ah, thank you. Help yourself. Thank you, sir. What's this you're doing here, sir? Well, I believe that certain poisons, if taken in the correct doses, can actually have beneficial rather than fatal effects. Now, that's very interesting. Uh, yes, dear, isn't it? What's all this over here, sir? Oh, that? Oh, those are some tropical leaves. Uh, they were sent to me by a friend of mine who hunts in that part of the country. The essence, you see, passes through this tube, down here and across the table, and is condensed in that retort there. 
And what's that stuff in the bottom there? That's lime. That acts as a catalytic agent to combine the essence of the leaves with a dark, tar-like substance, which you can see at the bottom. Inspector Lestrade, I demand to see my wife. You kept me waiting half an hour, and now I should like an explanation. Of course, you're entitled to one, sir. You know that Karl Oberstein was murdered in your study. I was informed of that, and it is a tragedy, of course. But I still don't see that that is... Lord Bell, your wife has confessed to shooting him. What? That's why I couldn't allow you to see her. We were taking her statement. What did she say? Apart from the actual confession of murder, she refuses to say anything. You may go in now, if you wish, Lord Bell. You're putting in now, sir? Well, it's a form of acid dye. Yeah. All right. Oh, where have you two been all the afternoon? Didn't the sergeant tell you? Oh, yes, I remember. It was a murder somewhere. Was it interesting? No, Mr. Dewey. Uh huh. Well, stay coming up with Want a worry free way to kill bugs? Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Where's the train? I don't know. I'll, I'll be off duty in um, five minutes. Yes, I think that'd be all right. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Meat for me. Well, um, sit down if you can find yourself a place. There you go. That's well, I think we can leave that to boil for a little while now. Uh, now, gentlemen, what's the problem? Who was murdered? A man named Karl Oberstein. Oberstein? Oberstein. Oh, yes, I remember. An Austrian chap. Mm, he was originally, but of course, for a number of years, he's been a freelance agent. Mm-hmm. Buying and selling anything he get his hands on, eh? Put his hands on a bit too much this time. Lady Burl shot him. Holt Smith, 38. Oh, really? It was a nasty bit, then. I examined the body before it was removed. Entire back of the head gone. Instantaneous death, of course. Did you find the bullet? No, the police sergeant will do that. It hadn't come out. Yes, and that shot in the back of the head removes any possible chance Lady Beryl may have had of claiming self-defense. You're off duty now, aren't you, Wilkins? Yes, sir. You may go home. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure working for you this afternoon, Mr. Holmes. Like to know it all turns out. I'll let you know. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I feel sorry for Lord Beryl. There'll be quite a scandal when this appears in the papers. Yes, it certainly will be. I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. What nationality was Lady Beryl originally? Well, um, she was born in Austria, although she was brought up in America. She's been here in England for the past five years since her marriage, you know. It's a shame a woman like her has remained in prison. Still, she might decide to tell you... What did you say? I beg your pardon. What did you say just now? I didn't say anything. Oh, yes, you did. You said, I wonder why Lady Beryl lied to you. Oh, that. Yes, what did you mean? Nothing, except, of course, that Lady Beryl didn't shoot this chap Oberstein at all. But, but, but she confessed to it. Nonsense. She didn't shoot Oberstein because Oberstein wasn't shot. His head was bashed in with a blunt instrument. The revolver you claim was the murder weapon actually belonged to Overstein. She found it lying by his side and pretended she'd done it in order to shield her husband. She's no more guilty than you two are. Or would you hold that like a good fellow, please? Mm. Would you please repeat that? Of course, it's as plain as a... Here, would you mind holding that? Oh, well, it's not plain to me. 
But you told me that Lady Beryl confessed to shooting Oberstein. But Oberstein wasn't shot. Just because you find a man with the back of his head shattered and a gun lying by his side is no reason to assume he's been shot. Thank you. You also assumed that the bullet had lodged in Oberstein's cranium because it hadn't emerged through the front. Now, any student of elementary ballistics knows that the greatest damage to the skull is on the opposite side to which the bullet enters. The point of entry is always clean. But the gun we found was an Austrian gun, and, and Lady Bell is an Austrian. Now, there's a logical bit of reasoning for you. Would you mind holding that, please? Lady Beryl saw Oberstein lying there and jumped to the same conclusion we did. Well, Lady Beryl's innocent. Then somebody else is guilty. Brilliant. We've got to get back to the premises and re-examine them for clues. You come with us, Holmes. This nonsense can wait. Nonsense? Nonsense. Nonsense? Did you say nonsense? I'll have you know, Inspector Lestrade, that if the law enforcement agencies of this country were a little, uh, an infinitesimal amount more advanced than ancient Neolithic man, I would not have to be doing the basic research work that will in time benefit police bureaus throughout the earth. You may have a point, Mr. Holmes. A point? The only point is, the only point is human, of which there is a paucity in the halls of our defense of the public. Those bureaus are quite better duty, and I'll tell you what the quality And now we return to the case of Lady Beryl. Yes, it's been dependent 90% on a good memory. Details are strange, those are the things. She's in here. And normally I'd detain her for confessing to a crime she didn't commit, but oh, what with the foreign office and all that, I don't believe I will. No, no, Miss Trade, you don't want to hold her. Much easier to solve the crime if she's out. Exactly. Inspector Lestrade. this murder you confessed to. I see. We would, however, like an explanation as to why you confessed to this crime. I prefer not to explain my actions, Inspector. You realize, of course, that your actions are in themselves punishable and that we could detain you. Still prefer to make those statements? That is correct. Very well, Lady Bell. You'll be released as soon as the formalities can be cleared. Thank you. Human beings lie to gain, to cover, or to protect. consider me forever in your debt. Not at all. You're in the foreign office, aren't you, Lord Beryl? I am. Had you ever met Herr Oberstein before? You lose. I had. Exactly when? Last week. For the first time? And the last time. I see. I believe it was his habit to offer large sums of money to men in key positions for the information they may have had in their possession. I believe that was his habit, Mr. Holmes. Thank you. Oh, Lord Merrill, while your wife is on her way here, I wonder if I might look at the premises of the crime. Well, of course, of course. It happened in the study. With your permission. My house is yours, sir. 
Thank you. Well, now, let me see. Um, Karl Oberstein was lying about, uh, about there. Of course, it's been removed. Uh, yes, yes, of course. I see you've cleaned everything up with your usual remarkable efficiency of the strain. Now look here, Holmes. I didn't know there was going to be any mystery about this affair. Oberstein's head was here, Holmes. His feet were there. Thank you, Watson. Round one. Fight! Where was the gun lying? To the left of the body. Nearer the head or the feet? Nearer the head. Was Oberstein face up or down? Face up. I had to turn him over to examine him. Has there been any effort made to gain forceful entry into the hut? Well, none was reported. What? Lord Ferrell, do you use glasses when you read? I, uh, yes, I do. Are they your only pair? Yes. First discovered the body. I believe my secretary. Is he here? Yes. I'll call him. Thank you. The strange. Where was Lord Ferrell at the time you estimated the crime was committed? He'd been at a meeting with high government officials all day. Oh, good. Why did you ask about the glasses, Holmes? Because Lord Beryl wears glasses when he reads. Lady Beryl confessed to a crime she didn't commit. What? This is my secretary, Mr. Ross. Met Inspector Lestrade and Dr. Watson. Uh, this gentleman is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do? I understand it's through your efforts that Lady Beryl was returning home. Uh, partially through my efforts. I wonder if I could impose upon you, Mr. Ross. I've got them. Would you mind taking these sheets of paper and roughly outline the position in which you discovered the body? Outline it in scraps of paper. If you would be so kind. Oh. So there. How many men have you on the premises, Lestrade? Two outside, why? Yeah, sure. I wonder if you'd mind taking them into the garden behind this window making a thorough search of the premises for a radius of 30 feet. Looking for what? Anything that doesn't belong in a garden. Are you serious, Holmes? You move completely. Let's got him out of our way. Have you examined your safe, Lord Harold? I have, Mr. Holmes. All my papers are intact. Excellent. Round Excellent. One. Does Mr. Ross have the combination to your safe? Yes. There's been no question of robbery. Of course not, Ross. I must ask these questions in investigation. Good afternoon, Lady Beryl. Darling. Oh, I'm all right, George. Quite all right. You must rest. This experience must have been horrible. It's all right. It didn't last long enough to be too difficult. I don't know how, but Holmes has solved the entire thing. Has he really? Not entirely, Lady Beryl. Not yet. Do you expect to? I can only hope to. Mr. Holmes, if there's anything I can do to help, if it would not be too much of an imposition, Lady Beryl, I would like you to retake the position in which Mr. Ross discovered you when he entered the room. Mr. Holmes, my wife has had a harrowing experience. Please consider her nerves at this point. You're forgetting, Lord Beryl, that your wife confessed to a crime she didn't commit. The circumstances are somewhat exceptional. But if Lady Beryl would rather not, I... It's quite all right, George. Let me see. I was standing here. Exactly there? 
I, uh, I believe so. Mr. Ross, are you quite certain that that is the position in which Lady Beryl was standing? Well, if you'll pardon my saying so, Lady Beryl, just for the sake of accuracy, you understand. I believe you were standing just a bit further to your left. A little to your left, Lady Beryl. Like that? Yes. I'd say right there. Good. Now, Lady Beryl had a revolver in her hand. Mr. Holmes. That is correct. In which hand? My right hand. Mr. Ross? That's right. Lady Beryl's right hand. Lord Beryl, do you happen to have a revolver in the house? Yes, I have. May I have it? I'm not going to ask my wife to... Yes, I am. If your wife has no objection. Of course she has objections. I have no objections, Mr. Holmes. Hi. I use Febreze Fade Defy Plug. And I use this. Febreze has a microchip to control scent release, so it smells first day fresh for 50 days. 50 days? And its refill reminder light means I'll never miss a day of freshness. <laughs> Febreze Plug. Ah, excellent, a 38 caliber. Did you notice, Watson, that it's patterned very closely after the Schmidt holt the revolver in question? Lady Beryl, is that the way you held it? I, I believe so. Mr. Ross? Yes, it was like that. Mr. Ross, I'd like you to think very hard. A great deal depends on what you're going to say now. As far as you can remember, that was the position of Herr Oberstein's body. Yes. And where in relation to Herr Oberstein's body and Lady Beryl were the broken eyeglasses? Over there. There? Yes. Watson, were there any glasses on the floor when you found the body? Absolutely not. You're positive? Positive. That's right. I didn't know what I was saying. There were no glasses on the floor at all. There weren't any glasses on the floor when you found Lady Beryl bending over the body. But there were when you sent Herr Oberstein crashing to the ground. Before you run, Mr. Ross, look at Lady Beryl. I don't understand this, Mr. Holmes. Oh, very simple, really. Herr Oberstein approached you with an offer to buy foreign office secrets. You threw him out. Then Ross contacted him, prepared to sell him the secret. Well, there's nothing to be seen from the safe. Of course not. If you sold anything, you'd have been found out. Herr Oberstein came here expecting to buy. You opened the safe, showed him the papers he wanted. He put his glasses on to examine them. And then when he paid you, you smashed his skull in. He fell, breaking his glasses. His revolver dropped from his pocket. Then you replaced the papers, pocketed the money and left. It's a lie! The unfortunate point occurred when Lady Beryl discovered the body. You read the evidence incorrectly. I thought the gun was my husband. Similar, but not the same. And the glass. A very common variety of frame. You gathered up the pieces, except a few fragments, and threw the frames away. Yes. Then you lied to protect your husband. Yes. Yes. Brilliant, Holmes. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you, Watson. My humble and very grateful thanks, Mr. Holmes. It's been a pleasure to help so brave and noble a woman. I'm still not quite certain what's happened, but I know we shall both be forever indebted to you. It's the whole garden, Holmes. Couldn't find anything but this old pair of glasses. The broken at that. Really? Mr. Holmes has solved the entire case, Inspector. He has? How? By the little things, Lestrade. The little things that one must remember. The little things that make the difference between success and disaster. One must never forget that the difference between... Good heavens. What? What is it, Holmes? I left the gas on under the experiment. Or Baker Street will be blown up. Holmes!
Since I turned it off, I don't stay on that. At Amica, we know the most important part of the car is the driver. You don't got to love. You don't I'm so glad you're okay. I know I can count on. Mary Magna, Binster, Binge, Great Binge and Lesser Binge. <laughs> amazing. What's amazing? The names of our English villages, Watson. What foreigner reading these could ever think of us as stiff and sober-minded people? Slippery Cross, Pirro Crag, Bird Cherry Brook and Birding Feast Place, Burlston Junction. When do we go? Go where? to Bolston Manor, Bolston, Sussex. Whatever led you to believe that I'm interested in Sussex, Bolston, or Bolston Manor? Oh, don't you saw the account of the rather way. gruesome murder of Squire John Douglas? Quite so. The case has interesting features. At the moment, I'm more interested in the uh, fly fishing possibilities in the neighborhood of Bolston. Ah, that would be the Aaron. Runs within two or three miles of the manor house. Hmm? What manner? Bolston, the home of the late Squire Douglas. Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Well, I believe he was quite a fisherman. The moat is 40 feet wide. 40 feet wide? Well, good Lord. He could probably fish from his bedroom window. And when the drawbridge is raised, the place becomes an island. Four hours after the bridge is raised, the body of Squire Douglas is found in his study with half his head blown off. That should appeal to you. Oh, fishing seems a safe business, my companion. You know a boat. A boat? For fly fishing? Have you ever fished before? Does this look like the equipment of an amateur? <laughs> Odd word. Which? Equipment. All the fishermen I've ever known talk about their tackle. What do you deduce from that? Obvious. Your fishing friend rather lacks experience or vocabulary. We deep sea fishermen 
are in the equipment class. None of your nasty little bundle. Yes, that gas is far more suitable for a shark than a trout. Do you really think so? No good for trout. Well, it depends what trout you're after. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, we must carry a tape measure. A tape measure? What do I have for? To measure our catch, of course. To measure our catch and throw back the little ones. A good rule in life, Watson. Always remember to throw back the little ones. You think our prey will count as a big one or a little one? Uh, hardly as big as Squire Douglas lying dead in his castle, surrounded by his moat. Holmes, you've been analyzing this case. Well, you know, I haven't got enough data yet for analysis, really. Do you think it could be an accident? What, with a sawn or shotgun? And the triggers of both barrels wired together? Murder, eh? Yes, possibly. What do you mean by possibly? Who <laughs> sit there, man? That may be opportunity knocking. They said go for a drive, and these naps have been unbeatable. So we're getting Chevron with Tecron for unbeatable mileage. Paying with the Chevron app makes this stop a snap. A very quiet snap. Unbeatable mileage for unbeatable drives. Come in. your view, intriguing affair, Bolster Manor, signed Inspector McLeod. Ha! Please English, for I'm utterly baffled. Oh, yeah, where is it? Where's what? Well, the tape measure, of course. What is that tape measure? Holding the pretty Christ together, sir. Violin case, boy. Oh, tell me what, how are we off the train? Ah, yes, now, let me see both. Yes, now, that would be the West Sussex Little Hampton Cogner line. Now, there's a 1015. Now, that doesn't stop. Of course, it's a 12 3. Let me get it in at 4 2 or 4 7. That's right, you got me. You think, aren't they, with it? 4 2 or 4 7. Come, Watson, you're slipping. Blind! Does it keep all the time? Times in his head? Where else, of course? We are a nation of railway pioneers, my boy. Like a great many Englishmen before him, Dr. Watson restricts his reading to the Bible, the Times, and Bradshaw's Railway Guide to the British Isles. Here, boy. Now the mark hairs, that's what you two are. <laughs> <laughs> I say, what? Have you seen my weekend bag anywhere? I suspect it's under the stairs. That's your best out of thing it's lying about. Oh, good. Well, that means it hasn't been unpacked anyway. I see you can. Excellent. Then everything is ready. Oh, be a good fellow. Would you uh, just dig out that bag and put it in the cab along with that uh, uh, tackle? Why? Aren't you going to be here? I have a little reading to do. Uh, pick me up at the British Museum Library. Uh, say, half an hour before the train leaves. Now, look here, Holmes, there's no time to go reading. You missed the train. I cannot vouch for the punctuality of Dr. Watson or the reliability of the company's steam engines, but I, for one, propose to be at Burlston Halt at 4.2 p.m. precisely. <laughs> nice piece of work, if I say so myself. The entire story hung on a spider's thread.
spider's thread. Exactly. Ah, yeah, it sounds interesting, Inspector. Now perhaps you'll start at the beginning. Simply stated. The castle, as you see, has a moat. And when it's up, as it was at the time of the murder, it has seemed thoughtless. Who was in the castle at the time of the crime? The murdered man's wife, Mrs. Douglas, and a foreign friend, John Morell. Just those two? And the servants. But we've been able to rule them out completely. Hmm. And from your description of the house, it would have to be one of them. Either Mrs. Douglas, or this friend of hers, Morell. Or both of them. I can repair because someone had broken into the house and then died through the windows to swing the moat. But you disproved it? Completely. How? I'll tell you when we get there. This uh, murder weapon. A sawn-off shotgun, I believe. An odd weapon, that. And a foreign gun, too. Three letters on the barrel. P, E, N. Ah, a larger P with a flourish over it, followed by a smaller E and N. Ah, the Pennsylvania Small Arms Company, the famous American firm. That's perfect. That's all I need. You mean you need additional evidence? Well, Mr. Holmes, every little helps, you know. Then your case against Morell is not complete. It's complete as far as... How did you know Morell is a murderer? How did you know? He has to be. Why? He's the only one who could be. Suppose I were to tell you that Morell is not your murderer. How do you know? Yes, sir. How do you know? Why didn't you arrest him? Well, I... He doesn't act like a murderer. Ah, he's too self-conscious, eh? Seems to be daring to arrest him. Yes. How do you know all this? Oh, do you know this man, Morell? Fascinating. Fascinating. The case has suddenly assumed the most astounding proportion and the most astonishing challenge, Watson. Yes, it is lovely, isn't it? What did you mean, Mr. Holmes? Nothing. I just think it's a lovely building. No, I mean when you said that Morrill didn't murder Mr. Douglas. Oh, that. Yes, what did you mean? How do you know he didn't do it? Well, if he didn't do it, she did. You're jumping again, the class. You're jumping. But it has to be one or the other. Does it really? What's he talking about? Well, then, you know. No, I don't know. If two people are in a steel house with a murdered man, one of them has to be a murderer. That's common sense. Ah, but is it logical? What do you mean, is it logical? I don't know, but Holmes says that all the time. I was hoping you might be able to tell me. He hasn't been moved. That's just the way we found him last night. What? Of course, death was instantaneous. I should say so. The charge was not fired directly into the face, as the newspaper's account had it. Uh huh. I'd say the blast came from below and that the gun was almost vertical. Excellent, Watson. Excellent. May I see this shotgun, McLeod? Holmes, look at this. Good Lord. Well, it's, it's a brand like cattle. Well, how old would you say it was? Have you got your glass, sir? Huh? Yes. Thank you. It's very difficult to estimate marking like this, Holmes, but I'd say, it's, well, it's over 15 years. Oh, baby, I feel so good. 20. Mr. Morell, at your service, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. News travels quickly. This is a small village. You said 20 years? Yes. The same age as this. It stands for the Mesa Valley, Arizona. Gold claim number 341. That is where John and I met 20 years ago. There were three of us. We registered the claim, worked it, and then sold it. We divided the money in thirds and went our different ways. 
Two years ago, I looked on up here and stayed on. I liked it. And the third partner? He lost his money, and I believe his mind. He came to believe that we had cheated him. And he swore to kill us ten years ago. Why didn't he? He couldn't find us. No, we didn't have the same names at the time. Do you think your old partner could have done that? I don't know, Mr. Holmes. I am not the detective. True. True. Well, we must bear that in mind. Of my destiny. You tried to make it appear as though another man had been here and went out through the window. Did I? He tried to build an elaborate story. A man of his size was seen passing through the village wearing a loud tweed top coat and a wide-brimmed hat. He was heading this way. On the window ledge, there is a footprint in blood, indicating, of course, that the murderer dived through the window and swam the moat. But he didn't. How do you know? Because, Mr. Moret, outside that window, and just a few feet down, is a very large, and at least a month old, spider's web. Anyone jumping or diving through the window would have to pass through the web. And no one did. Well done, McCann. Well done. A spider's web. The English police have the most amazing allies, I must say. Now that you have made your deductions, Mr. MacLeod, exactly what do they mean to me? For the moment, nothing. But I suggest you do not leave the castle grounds. And if I try to live, Well done, McLeod. You certainly got your man. But I'm not rushing in to make any arrests. I'm going to make sure the case is iron cast. Told me why. And what's the motive? Revenge for the Venice Valley affair? I've got to go a bit careful there, Doctor. If you ask me, it's a case of, uh, Cherche la woman. Oh, what is that? Well, you know how these things are, Doctor, between us, men of the world. We know how a situation like this can... Oh, of course. Oh. 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 Delicate situation. Delicate. Yes, delicate. Might uh, almost be called the case of the other man. <laughs> 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 the other dumbbell. Who? Not who, what? What? That's right, what? What are you talking about? That. There's only one dumbbell. One dumbbell. That's right. Well, there's only one dumbbell, what? I know, that's it over there. Yes, where's the other one? You well, I don't know, I've only just come here. Do you know where the other one is? What difference does it make? Oh, that's right, yes. What difference does it make? Maybe there is only one dumb... bell... dumbbell. One dumbbell? But they come in twos. Perhaps he only had one. What? Do you mean to tell me that you can stand there, surrounded by all these athletic trophies, and suggest to me that such a man would only use one dumbbell? Well, what difference does it make? There. What difference does it make? Huh. Well, if you two are convinced that you can solve the case with the aid of a convenient spider, I'm going fishing. You're what? Oh, he's going fishing. Brought his tackle. Why? To catch fish. Then I take it you're satisfied with my analysis of the crime. Find the dumbbell. Hang the dumbbell! Don't hang him until you find him. Who? The man who took the dumbbell. You've gone too far now, Holmes. I think you've made him very angry. Then he should fish. It soothes the nerves. Are you really going to fish? I am. Where? Out of that window. It looks very comfortable. 
Well, what do you expect to catch? A herring. A red herring. I have the tape measure, Watson. To measure a red herring? To measure the big red herring. The little ones I plan to throw back. Holmes, you're up to something. I am. What? Would you like to help? Of course. Well, look, take the good inspector down to the local pub and keep him there for at least an hour. While you fish for red herring? At the moment, I'm fishing for bait. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll do it. Good. Remember, one hour. I may enjoy myself in the local and stay too. <laughs> in that room. Oh. Mr. Holmes was sliding down them banisters. He was what? That's right, sir. Sliding down the banisters he was. Well, well, he was probably investigating something. Probably. Well, let's ask him. There must be some reason behind it. Good afternoon, gentlemen. <laughs> Go on. Ask him. Ask me what? Well? What have you been doing while we were away? Well, first I fished. No. Yeah. And then I slid down the banister. I told you. Why? Why not? Well. And you, Inspector McLeod, are going to drain the moat. I'm going to what? Drain the moat. Empty it right down to the bottom. I can't do that. That's a major engineering job. Don't you realize that's a real river that runs round the house? Well, in that case, don't drain the moat, but tell everyone you're going to. And then what? Then we'll all meet back here in an hour's time. And see if we can find somebody pulling something out of the moat. Exactly. <laughs> what? Red herring. As mad as a march air. How much longer? Not much. You're certain everyone believes they're going to drain the moat? I don't know who believes it, but everyone knows I said it. Do you think someone will come to the murder room? Someone has been in it for some time. How do you know? The light brown. Because I left them on. Mm -hmm. Look, what? That's it, let's go. Oh, excuse me. What are you using for bait? Mind uh, holding this? Thank you. What clothes did you say the stranger was wearing in the crowd? A loud tweed top coat and a white brim hat. Like these? The dumbbell. Holmes, how did you know? When you're working near water, Watson, and a heavy object has disappeared, you may conclude until you can prove otherwise that it has been used to prevent some object from rising to the surface. All right, Morell. You're under arrest for the murder of John Douglas. It is my duty to warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence... No, in no, no, McLeod. You haven't got it at all. What? This gentleman didn't kill John Douglas because John Douglas isn't dead. 
disappears in what? Dead. The man whose body you discovered in here is the very man who came back to... Uh, you're not with me, are you, Mr. Uh, would you tell him, please? These clothes belong to our third partner. A man who's been searching for you for ten years. Yes. He found us and arrived here with a shotgun. He and John struggled and the shot went off. That explains the vertical angle of the blast. In the ensuing struggle, the gun went off. I heard the report and ran down immediately. I timed it from your room. Fifteen seconds if you run and ten seconds if you slide down the banisters. I ran. I thought you would. John was panic-stricken when he saw what he had done. I got the idea to change their identities. But then where is Douglas? With the aid of my tape measure, I was able to ascertain that there is a hollow space behind that wall. I imagine it conceals a passage under the moat. Yes, Mr. Holmes, it does. And John has had a 36-hour head start. We'll stop him. I told him you would. I'll issue orders for the apprehension of Mr. Oh. Douglas. And we'll talk about your part in this, Hello, sir, in the morning. <laughs> um, you have conspired to conceal one. evidence. The I'll still be here games, in the morning, I Inspector. switch games and switch TV shows. So it makes sense to start a new TV show. A very brilliant piece of deductions, Mr. Well, Holmes. Sir. Excellent application of applied psychology. I haven't been tricked many times in my life. You must remember that the next time you become involved with murder. And you can now continue your fishing in a more normal manner. Uh, fishing? No, I, I don't care for it, really. <coughs> Unless it's deep sea, of course. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But in the absence of an ocean in the immediate vicinity, I think we'd better start back Vegas Street immediately. Well, now, there's a 9.13 or a 10.23. The 10.23 will hold us up at Tunbridge by the while. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Ah, not at all, not at all.